After fleeing the police for miles at speeds of over 100 miles per hour, when they finally stopped him, the first thing this drunk officer had to say was this. Hey, I'm a cop. Why are you, why are you acting like that? I'm a cop. This completely drunk lieutenant simply couldn't accept the fact that he made a mistake by getting behind the wheel. Sue me. Okay. I can't. Oh I'm not losing my career over you. And I'm not losing my career either. So. But that's nothing compared to this ex-police officer who injured a disabled man without any reason. But first, let me introduce you to James Hodges, a legally blind resident of Lake City who on October 31st, 2022, was unjustifiably stopped, searched, harassed, and ultimately arrested during a simple daytime stroll in his city. This American veteran had a walking stick in his back pocket during his walk which was officially assigned to him as a medical aid. However, the policewoman who spotted him perceived that navigational aid as a weapon. Hi there. Hey. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking it. The navigational aids. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Yeah, I am actually. What's your name and date of birth? I don't have to give that unless. Yes, sir. I was investigating. You have reasonable. Do you want me to put suspicion? you in handcuffs right now? Yes, sir. I do. What is your suspicion? It looks like you're carrying a gun in your back pocket. I'm stopping to make sure you're carrying it properly. You well, don't have, have you to... ensured that it's not a firearm? No, you keep turning so I can't see it. You don't have to be a d to me. Well, you're being one to me. No, sir, I'm have doing my job. Day. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? It does not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put supervisor, you in here? He's right here. All right. Police officers in the U.S., including in Florida, operate under the legal standard of reasonable suspicion when they perform a so-called stop and frisk. This means they need to have a reasonable suspicion that someone is involved in criminal activity to stop them. Once the man clarified and showed that the object was a medicinal aid, the officer's initial reasonable suspicion should have been dispelled. It seems that Mr. Hodges is aware of this, which is why he's asking for a supervisor. But wait till you hear what the supervisor has to say. Sir, what's the stop for? Walking stick. So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really present it, okay? Now she's asking me for to ID. Okay. I don't need the ID unless okay. there's reasonable articulated suspicion and her, that I have it, committed a crime and committing a crime and or her, about to do a crime. Sir, and her suspicion was that you were armed, okay? And she's asking you for your ID. Well, now right. she has verified that I am not armed, right. so there is no you problem. you have your ID or not? I do have my ID, okay. but you don't need it, okay? Mr. Hodges knows his rights. In Florida, people are only required by law to show police officers their ID when they are stopped on suspicion of a crime. But the worst is yet to come. Where's your ID? Pocket. Which pocket? You are not allowed to search me. Two five four zero. <laughs> Sir, are you legally blind? Yes, I am. Okay. All right, Mr. Hodges. Was that that hard? It's gonna be. I want your name and your badge you number. No, I put him in jail for resisting. Okay. All right, let's go. I want your name and badge number two, sir. You want to pick my property up, please? I sure will, after you have a seat. You want to pull this out of my back pocket? Sure. Here, I'll grab your jacket for you, too. Despite learning Mr. Hodges was unarmed, Officer Goad and Sergeant Harrison continued to detain and harass Mr. Hodges. The body cam footage shows officers reaching into Mr. Hodges' pocket without permission, committing an illegal search. Additionally, Sergeant Harrison handcuffed and arrested an entirely innocent man. And what's even more concerning is that this isn't the first time he has done such a thing. Hodges spent 26 hours in jail before being released. Following an investigation, the sheriff's office disciplined both officers with suspensions and additional training. Mr. Hodges also prepared a lawsuit against the officers. And now check this officer who quickly regretted his actions and burst into tears. A Miami-Dade police officer, Donovan Rojas, got behind the wheel of his patrol car while intoxicated and floored it. 
Another officer who spotted him speeding immediately pursued him, but Rojas didn't stop for nearly the next five miles, reaching speeds of up to 110 miles per hour. When they finally halted him, the officers approached with caution, assuming someone might be fleeing due to a criminal act. However, when the suspect emerged from the vehicle, it was a shock for all his colleagues. Listen to me when I tell you to get on your knees. All right, man. I'm call, bro. Clear, clear, clear. Who do you work for? You used to work for Miami Dade. Am I to... Be quiet. Clear, Don't clear. say another word. You hear me? This event, when broken down, has several serious legal and professional implications. Since Officer Rojas was swerving on the road while refusing to stop for the police, and also could barely stand on his feet during the arrest, it's obvious that he is quite drunk. If the off-duty officer's blood alcohol concentration was over the legal limit of 0.08%, he would be committing a DUI offense. There is also speeding and fleeing from law enforcement. The severity of this charge can vary from a misdemeanor to a felony depending on circumstances and state laws. And now, let's see what's with the police cruiser he used for this mess. Jesus. What? Sorry, I can't see it. Well, that wasn't on when he passed me. No, he's drunk. Did you turn that? Did you turn that on, or it was on? Son of a. Is this an agency vehicle? Yes, sir. You know how this goes. Okay, I don't want. Be quiet. Before I ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. Yes. You have the right to remain silent. With these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? No, sir. Okay. I feel you're impaired. Me? Yeah. Me? No. Okay. Are you willing to perform field sobriety exercises to dispel my suspicion that you're impaired? Today? No, sir. No. Okay. This is his agency car. Huh? This is his agency car. What's the tag come back to? Uh, I just asked him how to run the tag. I just got here. Um, uh, he and says he doesn't want to talk. He refuses to sobriety exercises. So, uh, oh, absolutely, he's f***ed up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. It is what it is. It was you and I, you was Andy? I clocked him at 107. I got him up to 111. And I know he saw my lights. Oh, yeah. As soon as he passed me. Bro. You, you, this is not the highlight of my day. I know, uh, bro. I'm sorry, brother, but... Yep, don't say anything else. After being brought to the police station, the now former officer, Rojas, consistently claimed he stopped as soon as he noticed he was being followed by another police vehicle. He stated he did not want to communicate, yet kept on mumbling that he stopped as soon as he could and that he didn't run from the officers. He refused a breathalyzer test. In the end, he was charged with fleeing and eluding and DUI. Following the arrest, Rojas was relieved of his duties at the Miami-Dade Police Department without pay. During the interrogation, he broke down when he realized his career was over and couldn't hold back tears. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right 
right here. Who is it? Get on the ground. I you, burn your shirt, get on the ground. Over here. On the ground. On the ground. Get on the ground. Do, do you not listen? Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. There's a gun behind me. There's a gun, I believe, behind me. I ain't got no gun next. This is Clarence Galeyard, a 58-year-old man from South Carolina. What you might not know is that Mr. Galeyard was unable to quickly lie down on the ground because he has metal rods and pins in his leg and hip. What you don't see is that the officer then thoughtlessly stepped on Mr. Galeyard with his foot, injuring him in the process. On July 26, 2021, the police received a false tip that someone was moving in front of a building with a weapon. Officer David Lance Dukes was the first to arrive at the scene. He immediately drew his weapon and began shouting at everyone present to lie down so he could retrieve the alleged weapon. And you might wonder, where was the weapon? Is there a gun back there? Ain't no gun. By that truck. Bro, you got a gun on you, man? No, I ain't got no gun. All right, I don't I'm just asking. No gun. He had something. I ain't the door's unlocked. No, he was right here. Watch him. Go watch him. There it is. Alright, that's what he had. I'm stand up. Alright, listen. I'm about to help you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yep. Listen. Yep, they slammed my head listen. down on the cement. Yeah. Go back inside. Go back in the house. Go back in the house. Ain't nobody talking to you. I got head drum. Go back in the house. Yeah. He was in front of the car when I came up. And he was walking like this. And I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. Had him at gunpoint. And he's over here doing something like this. You slammed my head. What he was doing is putting this up behind the tire. So he comes over right here. He got his hands in his pockets. I'm telling him, let me see your hands, let me see your hands, let me see your Why hands. You my head? He wasn't listening. These looks speak for themselves. Officer Dukes now realizes he made a big mistake and starts to explain himself in front of his superior. He claims he thought he saw a weapon, which is why he ordered everyone to get down and that Mr. Galeyard didn't obey, which isn't true because he reacted to the command as quickly as he could. Again, the man has a disability and can't just bend down easily. Depending on the specifics of the situation, the officer might ask individuals to get on the ground as a precautionary measure to secure the scene, especially if there's a belief that one of them might be armed. However, stomping on an individual without justifiable cause is a clear use of excessive force. Using force without cause, especially force that can cause harm or injury, is a violation of an individual's rights. For Officer Dukes, there's no way out, but he sticks to his story and even lies when a relative of the victim asks for his official details. Dude, I didn't know what his intention was. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that into evidence of what he had. What? Can I get a car for me? I don't have one, man. We don't have one. They, they, they don't give us cars. Okay, what's your badge number? 1059. Let me see if I can get my phone. Hold on. Hold on. We, we, we have cars. Okay. Thank you. In summary, Officer Dukes was fired and is no longer a police officer, and Mr. Galeyard received a compensation of $650,000 for the physical and emotional distress he suffered. And finally, let me introduce you to Lieutenant Brian Filippiak, or rather, former lieutenant. On November 13th, 2016, his fellow officers caught him behind the wheel while extremely intoxicated after receiving multiple reports from citizens about a pickup vehicle swerving on the road and nearly hitting other cars. Brian immediately knew what he had done, but he simply did not want to accept it and insisted that the officer let him go, even though everything was recorded on camera. Can I see your license and registration proof of insurance? Okay. You got your ID? The reason why I'm stopping you is we got multiple reckless driving calls about you. Okay. And then when I'm following you, you're hitting the shoulder of the road. You been drinking? How many? Just a couple. Okay. 
Oh, I'm gonna ask you to step out of the vehicle. What would you like me to do? Uh, just let me go. I can't. I had multiple phone calls. You'd be in the same situation if I was in the vehicle in your county, correct? Um, I don't know. But you... So, please step out of the vehicle for me. Just let me go. I'm not, go I can't let you go. We are, are we're, we're way past that point. You know this. No, I don't. Yeah, I'm trying out of the vehicle. I'm asking you nicely. I don't want to see anything worse happen. Okay? No, just let me go. Just let me s s stop over and call it, okay? I can't. Do me a favor. I can't. Oh, my God. I'm not losing my career over you. And I'm not losing my career either, so... Out of this vehicle now. I've, no, I've, no, be it. Out of this vehicle no, now. don't touch Brian, me. Brian, out of this vehicle no, no, now. don't touch me. Let's, let's step out. No, you know this. Out of this vehicle. No. Out of this vehicle, you're no. resisting an officer. No, you know I'm this. Not. We just have to. Out. Brian, go. No, hold Brian, on, guys. Brian. One more time. Taser right now if you don't get out. <laughs> out. Right now. Go to the front of my car. I didn't resist. We forcefully out to, yeah, uh, to you out of this vehicle. I was trying to make a deal. Okay. Just let me go. I will. Yes or no? Are you going to do a field sobriety test for me? I just want to sleep it off. Are you going to do a field sobriety test for me? Can we just sleep it off? No, you can't sleep it off. Are you going to do a field sobriety test for me? I don't know. Are you going to do a field sobriety test? Yes or no? Just let me. No. Yes or no? Are you going to do a field sobriety test? Walk the line, one legged stands, you know the routine. No, stop. Just let me. Yes or no? We're going to do field sobriety test. No, no, just let me. You're on my side, then do the sobriety test. It's no, a yes. I'm not on your side. If you're on my side, you let me just go. I'm doing my job, you know that. Yeah, and I'm doing my job too. Okay. If you're not going to do field sobriety, let's turn around, place your hands in your back, you're under arrest. No, I'm not. You are under arrest. No, don't. You are under arrest. Don't resist, Brian. No. Come on. Come on. Okay, you're, stop. You're, no, under, you're no, not going to. I'm not. I'm not resisting, but don't. Let's stop. You're let's tense about up. It. Let's talk about it, okay? I've tried. No, no, Have we a have seat. not talked. Brian, have a seat. Stop, guys. Hold on. I'm done. No. In my car. In my car. Get in there. Crawl in. I don't care. Stay right here. No. Yes. Just look. Brian, don't. Stop. Why are you doing this to a, a fellow? What? Brian Filipiak was sentenced to one year of probation with a deferred jail sentence and was stripped of his title as a lieutenant and sworn law enforcement officer.